Last summer, the Orlando Magic made another coaching change for the fourth time in six years. It's safe to say right now that Steve Clifford is here to stay. He brought the same philosophy he had with the Charlotte Hornets by being disciplined, strong defensively, and protecting the ball. This past season, the Magic finished eighth in defensive rating, third in defensive rebounding rate, and sixth in turnover rate. And he helped lead the Magic to the playoff for the first time since 2012 and it's their first division title since 2010. Nikola Vucevic was named an All-Star for the first time in his career as he put up career highs in points, rebounds, and assists per game. I feel that Vucevic has always had the talent to be one of the best big men. Being an All-Star solidifies that. Despite drafting big man Mo Bamba last summer, re-signing Vucevic should be the number one priority this summer. It was clear that Mo Bamba is not ready to be a full-time starter at this point of his career. But young guys like Bamba, along with Markel Fultz and Jonathan Isaac, are reasons to be excited for the future if you're a Magic fan. There's a ton of untapped potential in that group of players. Looking at their roster, finding a two-guard is what they should be searching for at 16. With the 16th pick in the draft, the Orlando Magic select Romeo Langford from Indiana University. Romeo was looked at as a surefire top 10 pick before the season. Now there's questions about his game going forward. Scouts were really disappointed in his three-point shot as he shot around 27%. But much of that could be because of a thumb injury he suffered early in the season and he decided to still play through it. Outside of three-point shooting, Langford did not disappoint. This silky smooth guard has great size and length for a two guard standing 6'6 with a 6'11 wingspan. Along with that size, he has a good handle, which allows him to create space to get his shot off. Romeo is one of the best finishers in the nation at the rim for a guard. He's a solid athlete, but he relies more on his strength and craftiness to score. He was way more efficient in the mid-range area than from three-point range. Romeo is a great talent. Him being available at 16 for Orlando could be a blessing. Orlando wasn't the best offensive team this past season. Drafting an offensive talent like Romeo is just what they need. The third full season under general manager Sean Marks and head coach Kenny Atkinson finally resulted in the Brooklyn Nets making the playoffs for the first time in four years. With how hard the team played under Atkinson the last couple of years and the talent that is on this team, I expected this team to make the postseason. But there were times it looked like it may not happen, especially after that bad injury from guard Karis LeVert. After that incident, the Nets lost eight straight games and started the season eight and 18. With players like Levert and Spencer Dinwiddie sideline, their most talented player D'Angelo Russell took the team on his back and carried them throughout the season. His improvements in his three-point shooting, defense, and late game decision making led to him making his first All-Star appearance. The first of many. There were a lot of young guys that stepped up this past season, which is why the Nets looked to have a bright future. And with two first round picks this year, it can only get better. With the 17th pick in the draft, the Brooklyn Nets select PJ Washington from the University of Kentucky. It seems like in the last couple of years, most of the players returning for their sophomore years really don't improve their game that much. That's not the case with PJ Washington. He improved in almost every area. He was a much better shooter this season as he shot over 40% from three-point range, which is a dramatic improvement. He shot way more three-pointers and made more. Washington was a more assertive post player and now has a more reliable jump hook. He plays with a lot of energy and effort. He can be the ultimate glue guy for an NBA team. Not great at any one area, but he still can make his presence felt. Even though he measured in at 6'6 at the NBA Combine, his 7'2 wingspan will more than make up for his height. Players like Draymond Green and Paul Millsap have similar size and length, and they have enjoyed nothing but success on the next level. Adding a solid post player who can shoot the three is something any team could use. The Indiana Pacers were on track to have home court advantage in the first round this season. They were a way more consistent team than Philadelphia and Boston and had a firm control of the third seed. But when their best player Victor Oladipo went down with a devastating knee injury, the hopes of getting past the first round were off the table. But by no means did this team lay down and give up. If you had the paces on the schedule, you were definitely going to be in for a dogfight. But eventually this team relinquished the third seed and finished fifth 
and lost in the first round for the fourth straight year. The Pacers have a lot of players that will be free agents this summer, so the team next season could be a lot different. They could have around $60 million in cap space this summer. Even though they have never been a free agent destination, anything is possible. Second tier free agents like Tobias Harris and Kimba Walker are realistic options for the Pacers. They need more shooting and another score next to Victor Oladipo. With the 18th pick in the draft, the Indiana Pacers select Tyler Hero from the University of Kentucky. Hero had a slow start at Kentucky, but as he got more confident and comfortable in this role, his shooting took off. He shot over 40% from deep in conference play. Hero also shot 93% from the free throw line, which is a great indicator of his shooting potential. He knocked down a ton of clutch shot at the end of games to push the Wildcats to victory. Hero is known for his shooting, but he's not just a shooter. He's a good athlete who drives strong to the basket with great body control and soft touch. Hero showed off his point guard skills late in the season, with sometimes initiating the offense, showing he could possibly play both guard spots on the next level. But there are concerns on the defensive end, as he lacked the foot speed and strength that is needed to be a good defender. He also has a negative wingspan, which makes it even more difficult. But Tyler is looked at as a possible great shooter and a solid scorer overall, and that's what the Pacers need from their 18th pick. Going forward with our players like Kawhi Leonard, Tony Parker, and Manu Ginobili was going to be hard enough. But having rising star player like DeJounte Murray tear his ACL right before the season started, you started to wonder could the Spurs end up missing the playoffs for the first time in two decades? But there were plenty of players on the team who stepped their game up and they ended up winning 48 games. DeMar DeRozan showed a lot of maturity and progression in this game and showed great improvement as a passer. LaMarcus Aldridge picked up where he left off last season, but it was players like Derek White, Brent Forbes, and Davis Bertans who really showed up and showed out. Every month it seemed like Derek White was gaining more confidence, showcasing his all-around game on both sides of the ball. Spurs fans should really be excited about a backcourt of Murray and White going forward. The Spurs have two first round picks, and given their track record, they could hit on both. With the 19th pick in the draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Goga Patassi from the Republic of Georgia. Patassi is a very skilled and productive big man who's been playing professionally since 2015. He was awarded the EuroLeague Rising Star Trophy this past season, which recognizes the best player who is under the age of 22. He's the first center to win that award since 2006. But Tazzy has a versatile offensive skill set. His game starts with being a floor spacer. He has good mechanics and shoots a good percentage from mid-range and three-point range. But Tazzy is also good in pick and roll and has developed a nice floater to his game, which is rare for a big man. He's the type of player who doesn't shy away from contact, and he actually embraces it. He's a solid post scorer, but it's not looked at as a player that you can run your offense through, at least not at the moment. He's a fluid athlete who moves very well for a man his size, displays soft hands, and can play above the rim. Goga has the length, mobility, and anticipation to be an excellent shot blocker on the next level. He's not the most explosive guy, but has very good timing as a shot blocker. He is a very intense player with a little bit of a mean streak. It seems that most of the international big men are all good passers and Patassi is no different. He is a good decision maker and has shown the ability to hit players in the right spots. He's a good defender in the paint, but he may struggle defending the pick and roll as he's far from light on his feet on defense. Continuing to work on his body is a must. Playing with an organization like the Spurs, I have no doubt that Patassi will maximize his potential. With the 20th pick in the draft, the Boston Celtics select Keldon Johnson from the University of Kentucky. Keldon is a passionate athletic wing player who has the physical tools that can help him succeed at his position. He relentlessly attacks the basket and has the strength to finish at the rim. What was most impressive about Keldon's game in college was his outside shot. He wasn't necessarily known for his outside shooting coming into college. He made 38% from three on three and a half attempts per game. His shooting form looks good and is getting good arc on his shot. He's also shooting 75% from the free throw line, which is a good sign for being consistent in the future. Creating off the dribble is something Keldon haven't proved he can do at this point. He was a good scorer at Kentucky as a slasher, but he's mostly a straight line driver. 
He had ups and downs as a defender at Kentucky, but with his length and tenacity, and with more experience, he should develop into a plus defender. Keldon is your prototypical wing player who has a good upside as a scorer and a defender combined with rebounding and a high motor.